people treat the Bible and God as a magic answer to real mental health problems, the result is often disappointment. Hey friends, what's up? Welcome back to another TNE Responds. Today, we're responding to a short clip from Rich and Don Cherie Wilkerson. They are pastors of the megachurch Vu Church, which is short for Rendezvous. Now, honestly, we could spend a lot of time just unpacking their background, but to give you some context, Rich married Kanye West and Kim Kardashian back in the day, and their church is a pretty typical megachurch in terms of size and vibe. It's very elevation church Ish, esque, something like that. So I found this clip and at first I was thinking, okay, I'll do a short response on Instagram. But as I watched, there was too much to unpack. So here we are doing a full response to it. Now, this clip has to do with mental health. And honestly, at first, I wasn't that surprised to hear what they said. But as the video went on, I was quite shocked. So to set this clip up, this was shared by Vu Church on their Instagram. I'm not editing anything down, so what you see is what they wanted you to see, and it's both Rich and Don Cherie giving advice on therapy. So let's begin. If you're following Jesus, you shouldn't be receiving counsel from anyone who isn't using the Bible as the framework for your therapy and counsel. Okay, let's stop right there. Do you think Don Cherie would give this advice to someone in their church who um, maybe had a tumor or had cancer or broke a leg recently? Could you imagine if she said with a straight face, hey, if you're following Jesus, make sure you're seeing a doctor who uses the Bible as their framework to diagnose the problem. I mean, look. Yes, there are some people out there who don't go to doctors because they believe God will heal them, but that is incredibly rare and very much looked down upon, even by most Pentecostals and Charismatics. Virtually no one feels the need to ask their healthcare provider if the doctor they're going to see is using the Bible for their framework to make a proper diagnosis and or prognosis. Yet, for some reason in the church, when it comes to your mental health, suddenly the Bible becomes the standard for psychology. Why? I mean, aside from a few verses, the Bible has very little to say about mental health. Sure, it might say some things like cast your cares upon him or don't worry because we don't know what tomorrow is going to hold. But there's no direct prescription for navigating crippling anxiety or panic attacks or ruminating thoughts, depression, bipolar, PTSD, etc. And when people treat the Bible and God as a magic answer to real mental health problems, the result is often disappointment. I mean, a few years ago, I hit a wall, a real wall of serious anxiety, panic attacks, and ruminating thoughts. It was like someone flipped a switch in my brain, and all of a sudden, I was in it. I lost about 30 pounds in a month or so. My body was stuck in 24-7 fight or flight, and I did what I was told to do in the church. I prayed. In fact, it got so bad, and I'll never forget this. I woke up at 4 a.m. and felt like my body was on fire. I wanted to run an entire marathon. I was on my knees, in my underwear, weeping, begging God to take all of this away. I felt like I was in hell. I was weeping and gnashing my teeth. And I was reading scripture and praying 24-7. You know how God answered my prayer? Therapy. And people in my life who held my hand and guided me out one day at a time. At first, I was seeing a Christian counselor and he was fine. But ultimately, it wasn't him who really helped me. It was a secular psychologist who gave me the tools to manage it. It's really a shame that people who I believe do mean well will say this kind of stuff to their massive audience because it's usually bad advice that does way more harm than good. There is nothing wrong with seeing a non-Christian therapist, just like how there is nothing wrong with seeing a non-Christian physician or dentist. Okay, let's keep going. Because Rick and I, we're amazed. We'll counsel different people and they will tell us what their therapists say, that they... Okay, this is a great example of what I was talking about earlier. Now, as far as I could tell researching for this video, neither Rich nor Don Cherie have any background or formal training in counseling or therapy. And I am going off of one video here, so I get that. So this could be speculation, but in my experience growing up in the evangelical church, pastors often saw themselves as experts on things they just had no business claiming to be experts on. 
Unless your pastor has a legitimate counseling or therapist background, I highly recommend going somewhere else. Honestly, even if they are qualified, it still blurs the line between friend and therapist. I don't know all the do's and don'ts, but I believe it is a major no-no for a therapist to take on a friend as a client. But either way, the role of a pastor is not the role of a therapist or a counselor. And if we're gonna really get into the weeds here for a second, I would argue that this concept of CEO pastor is really unhealthy for so many reasons. But let's just say you attend a church with a typical evangelical structure. Can a pastor offer advice or even give you counsel? Sure. I mean, friends do this all the time, and it's actually quite normal and healthy to seek the wisdom of people that you admire and look up to. But that's such a different world than a pastor acting as a counselor or therapist. Do not confuse the two. The other thing I really don't like in this clip so far is how Don Cherie is setting up a dichotomy between them as pastors versus secular therapists. But let's hear the next part of this and see what she has to say. They talk to a therapist about the the issues they're facing in their marriage and their therapist looks back at them and says, well, have you considered an open relationship? Have you considered redefining the boundaries of your marriage? Let me tell you, that is not helping your marriage. That is destroying your marriage. You have an abundance of counsel, but find somebody who preaches the word of God to you. I don't need advice, I need truth. Can I get an amen? Okay, wow, there's a lot going on here. First, I have never heard of a therapist giving advice like this. In fact, in the comments of this video, the church is getting lit up by actual therapists saying, yeah, that story doesn't add up. Here's one comment, for example, quote, as a therapist, this sounds very exaggerated and likely not what was said at all, being that suggesting things like that is highly unethical. In fact, therapists are trained to not give advice, period. We facilitate insight and help our clients devise their own authentic solutions. So I wonder if this person you counseled was too afraid to admit to you that they brought up an open relationship to their therapist and the therapist, non-judgmentally, helped facilitate the exploration of that idea. Therapists don't have preconceived notions about what a couple slash client should do. We're more interested in helping that couple slash client discover that for themselves. Sometimes that includes their religious beliefs and values, and other times it does not if they aren't religious. Hope that helps. <laughs> yeah, they nailed it. And I really don't want to be over the top cynical here. I, I really don't. But how do we know this story is legit? I mean, is it really beyond pastors, let alone megachurch pastors, to embellish stories or just straight up manufacture them? Nothing really adds up about this story when you think about it. A couple in their massive congregation went to presumably a secular therapist and said, hey, we're having marriage problems. And the therapist goes, well, have you tried an open marriage? And somehow that gets back around to Don Cherie. I'm sorry. I really am. I'm really sorry. But I need a little more proof here that this story being told is true because the incentive is the opposite. They have an incentive to be against therapy that isn't grounded in the Bible. <sighs> it's very frustrating. But the last thing that we have to take note of here is this obsession with the Word of God, which in this case is the Bible and this obsession between the Word of God being truth. It's an oversimplification of what the Bible is. And also, according to the book of John, Jesus is the word of God, not the Bible. And coming from an evangelical world, I can't help but have alarm bells going off when I hear very wealthy and prominent megachurch pastors give such oversimplified and honestly terrible advice based on a story that doesn't add up and make sense. And that story is used to paint all therapists who don't use the Bible as problematic or dangerous. I would love to know what you think about this clip and what your experience with a therapist, both Christian and non-Christian, has been in the comments. Because these kinds of clips, I think, create so much harm for people in these spaces who feel like their only option is to either go to a Christian counselor or go to a pastor who's not qualified or suffer and have no option towards a better way forward. So anyway, thanks so much for watching this video. Again, I would love your thoughts. Put it in the comments. Shoot me an email. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Talk to y'all later on.